Hello, today we're going to talk about a practical approach, the front to back approach to the paranasal sinuses. Uh, we're going to perform a complete sinus surgery which consists in uh, three ostomies, a maxillary ostomy, a sphenoid ostomy and frontal ostomy and two ectomies, uh, anterior and posterior hemoidectomies. This is a patient with a uh, with a nasal polyps, uh, chronic rhinosinusitis with, with polyps, and we're going to perform, a, as I said before, a complete sinus surgery just to uh, create a single sinus cavity to uh, optimize the arrival of topical corticosteroids. Uh, first, we're going to take out some polyps just to give the middle meatus a uh, middle meatus form, and we can identify some anatomical structures as the unit process, the axilla of the the middle terminate and the uh, face of the bulla. As you can see here, we can see the the unit process. The unit process is the first vertical lamella that we're going to to approach and we're going to dissect. Uh, for this, I do uh, a three bites with the back biter on the inferior portion of the unit process, and normally this will open uh, an opening in the maxillary sinus ostium. Uh, second, we're going to luxate the unit process anteriorly, which is called a uh, swing door technique. And then we're going to uh, dissect it. Normally, use this step with a uh, with a uh, uh, Kerrigan forceps. I like it very much, but you can use a backbiter or even the micro debrider directly if you please. Uh, the whole idea to take out uh, the first lamella. Uh, is to open the gate between the first and the second lamella. The second lamella is the face of the bulla, and in this space between the unsinic process and the face of the bulla, we're going to find the frontal recess up, and on the lateral wall, we're going to find the maxillary sinus. Uh, for remember that we're using a zero angle scope for this, and we're going to use it all surgery. We're going to access the frontal sinus with it. Uh, for oh, for getting to the frontal recess like this, uh, you have to take take and dissect the frontal process of the maxillary sinus that is located here in the axilla of the middle turbinate and lateral to it. This will give you access to well, we're going to take out the first the agar nasi cell and give you access to the frontal frontal moidal cells. They are going to be uh, in the site of the frontal recess. Sometimes you have to take two or three, four cells of uh, the frontal moidal cells first to access first, first accessing to the frontal sinus. We're going to use uh, here the intact bulla technique to the frontal recess. Uh, you know that the face of the bulla, if you follow it in every CT scan, it will take you di right directly to the. Mm to the frontal recess and that's what we're going to do now uh, but first we're going to get into the maxillary sinus just to expose the sinus and give the, the posterior wall of the maxillary sinus a good landmark for depth and we're going to open it first as I said uh, we're going to open this step the maxillary sinus and then <coughs> expose the frontal recess I like to use the micro debrider a lot just to dissect. Uh, normally, to take out some redundant mucosa that it's uh, that you can take out cleanly and easily with the debrider. I never dissect or get into the the sinuses with the debrider because that's that that's where that's where accidents happen normally. Remember, it's a power tool. And if you maintain just dissections with the forceps or or cold instruments, and then with the with the debrider, you just take out the redundant mucosa and bone chips, you'll be safe. So we're going to still take out, and you can see here more frontal moidal cells that you have to take out in order to see and access the frontal recess. Sometimes you have to take out more of the frontal process of the maxillary of the maxillary bone to gain access to this uh, frontal recess. You can see here some polyps and some inflammation there in the entrance of the frontal sinus and, and now I see that we entered the 
recess. You can see it. Uh, I like to use a patty inside the frontal recess just to whiten it a little bit and let the the print solution to uh, open the sinus a little bit to reduce the swollen mucosa there. And with a gentle movement with an aspirator or an angled um, instrument, you can slide it softly inside the frontal sinus. You should not be having problems to you can manage to put one one putty inside. Uh, next step is to open the second vertical lamella, that is the face of the of the bulla, uh, with two or three bites of the bulla, it's, it's enough to open the anterior moidal complex. You know that the anterior moidal complex is going to be the second room that is between the second vertical lamella that I said is the face of the bulla, and the third vertical lamella that is the uh, basal lamella of the middle terminate. Here you will find the anterior moidal complex and the anterior uh, anterior and moidal artery. In this space, uh, the the cells are smaller. There are between eight and tells, ten cells, and we continue with the same principle. We dissect with uh, with the forceps, and we just eat up with the micro debrider the rest of the bone chips and this the swollen or uh, redundant mucosa. You will see the different uh, formations and now as with a little bit of time with, uh, with the patty you can see now that we have a wide opening to the frontal recess and the frontal um, sinus here. As you can see it's uh, wide open and it looks like uh, a draft 2A, as you can see the opening of the frontal sinus is from the lamina papyracea right to the uh, middle terminate. It's a wide opening. Uh, as you can see, we continue to take out some um, plain mucosa and we're going to try to access here to the posterior etmoid. etmoid. Uh, this, the posterior etmoid is the, the space third room that is posteriorly to the uh, middle term to the uh, basal lamella of the middle terminate and the posterior complex is the cells are bigger than the anterior and it's formed by three to five cells. In this space you will find normally the posterior moidal complex and the posterior uh, and moidal artery. Uh, normally you can it's, you don't usually encounter the artery but in principle is down there. As you can see, we're going to open this, the the spaces in the same in in the same manner, just dissecting a little bit with the forceps, and then taking out the mucosa. Sometimes you just pass through the posterior moidal complex to the to the sphenoid, depending on the on the normal on the anatomy of the patient. Remember that every anatomy is different. Every patient is different, even from side to side. And as you can see here, we're looking at, you can see the change of color and density of the bone. We assume that here we are just arrived to the, to the skull base. I suspect that here for death purposes, I think it's quite probably the sphenoid. We're going to check it out when we uh, lateralize and we'll terminate to see the, the ostium and where the ostium is and the depth of the of the sinus, but as I said before, we just continue the same process just for dissecting the sinuses. We dissect one cell at a time from anterior to posterior, and we just take all the redundant mucosa and bone chips just with the vibrator to see what's happening in them. Uh, the fifth vertical lamella sorry, the fourth vertical lamella that is not always constant and you normally don't see it is the, uh, the middle, uh, the, uh, the basal lamella of the superior terminate. And the fifth uh, vertical lamella is the face of the sphenoid. As you can see here, with the natural ostium, the sphenoid is right there and these cells posterior to the to the to the ostium and the and the posterior nasal wall, so we assume that this small cell that it's quite a small sphenoid, it's the sphenoid. 
we're going to open and wait a little bit and with that our 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 dissection should be completed remember that the as i said before the objective of a complete sinus surgery while operating on a on a on a chronic rhinosinusitis is not curing the patient we are not going to cure the patient because it's an inflammatory problem but the objective of this surgery is to open a single sinus cavity that is going to um, that is going to uh, uh, enhance how the, cor the topical corti corticosteroids arrive to the sinus mucosa. Uh, that's it. The, the, the objective is that is to open a wide single sinus cavity to optimize the arrival of uh, medication to the sinus mucosa. As you can take out more, mostly of the rest of the renal mucosa and bone chips, you will reduce the, the crusting on the postoperative care and will give a, a patient better comfort. As you can see here, our, our dissection is completed. Frontal sinus ostomy, sphenoid ostomy, maxillary ostomy, and anterior and posterior ethmoidectomy. Okay, thank you very much for watching.